Hey guys, remember the last time we brought to you some information about what Caribbean government signed and the deal they made with the devil at the UN? We didn't really bring to you the dark, I mean really the dark side of that deal. So check this out, you need to know. The UN's pact for the future sounds all lovely and warm and collaborative. Who wouldn't want to think about the future and a harmless pact to help protect humanity, all with your best interests at heart. Call me a skeptic. I think we need to dig a little deeper into this. It is not possible to achieve these utopian ideals without a deliberate, perhaps forceful, redistribution of food, goods, property and rights. Just like good old fashioned communism, the ambition for equal outcome for everyone always results in the very rich getting supremely richer, the very poor perhaps being lifted up a little, but the billions in the middle getting colder, poorer, hungrier and enslaved within their digital prison. Just as communism was never really about equality, this new version, which is deceptively called stakeholder capitalism, is not about equality either. This is Klaus Schwab's you will own nothing and you will be happy mantra. No, you won't. You'll be miserable, you'll be weak, you'll be obedient, but hopefully sufficiently angry to try and break free. The UN's Agenda 2030 is all about control. Leaders lacking empathy are not troubled by reducing humanity to a mere data set upon which they can keep tabs. And at that point, we, the people, are nothing more than a commodity which can be monetized. Will the people of the world comply with this technocratic vision or will we rebel? Can we even find a different way to function outside of a digital prison? The Pact for the Future and its complementary documents are on the surface designed to create a more interconnected and cooperative world. The Global Digital Compact claims to aspire to making the use of digital technologies more responsible and inclusive. Who wouldn't want that? They claim that they are concerned about digital privacy, cybersecurity, and the digital divide. But whenever governments try to control the behemoth that is the online world, every road leads to the suppression of free speech and the ludicrous idea that someone somewhere in a lavishly glazed office can decide what is factual information and what is misinformation. The Declaration on Future Generations cleverly ramps up the guilt. Who could possibly resist measures that would be required to protect the planet for their children and grandchildren? And yes, of course, we need to leave this world in a better state than when we found it. But this has all been decided on the publicly indisputable assumption that there is consensus on, for example, man-made climate change due to carbon emissions. Because 21st century challenges require 21st century solutions, frameworks that are networked and inclusive, and that draw on the expertise of all of humanity. I called for this summit because our world is heading off the rails and we need tough decisions to get back on track. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has been a strong advocate for these initiatives. Let's hear what he had to say about the importance of these documents. Conflicts are raging and multiplying from the Middle East to Ukraine and Sudan with no end in sight. Our collective security system is threatened by geopolitical divides, nuclear posturing and the development of new weapons and theatres of war. Resources that could bring opportunities and hope are invested in death and destruction. Open pathways to new possibilities and opportunities. Our world is going through a time and turbulence and a period of transition. But we cannot wait for perfect conditions. We must take the first decisive steps towards updating and reforming international cooperation and make it more networked, more fair, and more inclusive now. And today, thanks to your efforts, we have. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Pact for the Future 
the Global Digital Compact and the Declaration on Future Generations open pathways to new possibilities and opportunities. Guterres emphasizes the need for urgent action and global cooperation to address the challenges we face. The race is on to save the planet and possibly line the pockets of vested interests in captured regulatory bodies, made up of a very small group of experts rather than through any democratic process. Thankfully, Agenda 2030 has already sparked debates and protests in various parts of the world, despite it getting almost no mentions in the Western, particularly the British mainstream media. The alternative social news media is awash with awareness. Millions of you are concerned about the potential loss of national sovereignty and also individual freedoms. Agenda 2030's commitment to homes being given to climate migrants will make small boat illegal migration look utterly trivial. This powerful technocracy might prioritize so-called efficiency. They might persuade countries to be responsible over issues such as cleaner seas, education for girls under otherwise medieval regimes, and even toilets in remote African villages. But it is so obvious in their literature. Have a look, it's in your phone, it's in your apps, that the stuff which really excites them is not the expensive projects like dredging plastic from oceans or building toilets from Maasai tribes. It's the profitable stuff. It's the wind turbines. It's the solar farms currently being built on top of beautiful, natural, life-giving farms. It is surveillance on the streets. It's the highly profitable diversity and inclusion ticket, which perhaps contains a blatant contradiction between the UN's ambition to empower women and girls, but also heavily promote the trans ideology which can steal spaces from those women and girls. We all need to become hyper vigilant to the 2030 UN agenda. Its end game is control. Where and when you travel, what you eat, who you can see, what you can say, but all is not lost. The Dutch farmers and the Canadian truckers showed what can be done when people come together, driven by the need to put individual freedoms first. The freedom to transact, to trade, to refuse an inject injection that they didn't want in the case of the truckers, even just to grow the food that the farmers want to grow in the way that they want to grow it. This sort of collective has immense power. Once a group of people with megalomaniacal drives and vested profit motives control the food, they control the people. So stay informed about these developments and understand their implications. Engage in discussions, ask questions, make your voice heard. Chat about it at the bus stop. Show your mate down the pub that this agenda is already hidden in their handset. Ask how they feel about the erosion of their freedom from a small number of power trippers eating canapes in Europe. There are many ways to get involved. Attend public forums, vote in elections, join advocacy groups and stay active in your community. By participating in these processes, we can help ensure that our future is shaped by you, the people, which is exactly how it should be. Yeah, we're in a lot of problems, a lot of problems. You gotta keep it up, folks. It's gonna be a hell of a ride. Take it easy.